Action. Yeah. When Christopher was in junior high. <laughs> Alberta. <laughs> <laughs> All right. When Christopher was in junior high, he had a paper route and he saved a lot of his money. And when his big, his first big purchase was a uh, Radio Shack clock radio. But it wasn't just a little clock radio. It was like a magnificent, huge clock radio. It was like the size of a VCR, and um, it had a. It was it was cool because it was it was digital. Right, so instead of uh, the hands on the clock, it um, it had these flaps, so it would be like seven thirty seven, seven thirty eight, right? And it was so cool. We would all gather around the clock and wait, wait for the thing to flip down, and like, oh, look at that! <laughs> that is the great. That is a great clock. And the best part would be when it was like nine fifty eight, nine fifty nine, and be like, okay, everybody, get over, because then both both of them would go down for ten o'clock. It was a very cool clock. And he was very proud of it. But the thing that he liked the best about it is that it had uh, radio. It had both. I didn't know what these things were. There was AM and a thing FM. He tried to explain to me. FM is better. AM is not good. I didn't understand the, the difference. He's like, FM is, has music. I'm like, AM has music. There's Petula Clark playing downtown on the radio on top of the refrigerator every day. He's like, no, no, this has Rock and roll. This is so he had a station he listened to, uh, WXLO 99X, and that was his rock and roll station. And there was a band on there called the the Beatles. Like never heard of this band, but he he loved the Beatles, so uh, he we would listen to that. So that was our kind of introduction. He was he was the oldest and still is. He, like he discovered these things before the rest of us. So. The, um, the Beatles were great. This clock radio also had a tape player, cassette player. And we loved the Beatles. There was a movie that the Beatles did, Yellow Submarine. And we would watch the Yellow Submarine on TV. It was awesome. It was so funny and entertaining and there was all the music in it. And uh, you know, it would come on TV. And um, the next time it would come on, maybe like a year later. Uh, and so we knew like a week ahead of time because you had to read in the TV guide. Like there was no guide on the TV. There was a TV guide, a piece of, there was a paper book. And it would tell you the shows that were on. And we're like, oh, the Yellow Submarine's going to be on Thursday at 8. So we would all gather and we would watch that. And, uh, and it was just such a great movie. We loved Yellow Submarine. And then a third time it came on and we knew it was going to be coming on on whatever date. And Christopher said, okay. We're gonna watch it, but no one can talk. Nobody can laugh. Nobody can sing. Nobody can get out of their chair. Nobody can go up to use the bathroom because I'm gonna record it. And so he got a microphone. He plugged it into his clock radio and he put the microphone up against the television speaker. That's how he's gonna record it. And we all sat in the den. The door to the bathroom is closed. The door to the living room is closed. The little double Dutch door that we had. And we all sat in there quiet under threat of punishment from Chris and we watch it and then we get to a commercial and he would stop the recording and now we only now you get about two minutes of commercials so he had to figure out he had to rewind find out where the commercial came on stop it and then when the yellow submarine came back on tur turn the recording on again it was really it was a very delicate operation and so he recorded the entire movie and so he had the he had the the, the dialogue no video but we had the audio of the entire Yellow Submarine. And so he would listen to that over and over on the tape. And then he, what he started to do was, well, we moved out of the bedroom we were in. There used to be the four boys in the one bedroom. But then right around this time, uh, Christopher and I moved up to the, the attic. Uh, so it was a mostly finished room. The, the, the ceiling was finished with paneling, and there was a skylight, and the, the walls had dressers built into them. Um, there was some stuff that wasn't done, like the wall at one end was still plasterboard. Um, and what Chris did is he wrote down the entire dialogue of the entire of the movie of the Yellow Submarine, and then he had this great idea, and he bought colored pens, and he wrote on the wall down at the like down in the eaves, like down at the bottom of the wall, and he wrote the whole script of Yellow Submarine on the wall of the room. And it would go all the way down. It was like like a like a Hebrew scribe, you know, like all the way down to the, like one inch off the floor. And he writing it, and it's like 
So Paul McCartney was in red, and you know John Lennon was blue, and Ringo was green. Like he had the whole thing, the whole color coded. Then he would finish one column, and then he would go up to the ceiling and start writing it down, down another column, and then another one. He'd have, then he'd have to like Michelangelo. He'd have to get up on a chair to reach the, the top of the ceiling and write it all the way down. And the whole thing. And I, the thing is, I watched him write the whole thing. I was like, look at that. That's amazing. So he did the whole thing, and I think when he got to the end, actually I think he did the whole thing in pencil, and then he went back and said, I could do this better. And he ran over, went over his own handwriting with the colored pens. So then when he was done, I think he was a little let down, like, what else can I do with this yellow submarine? So he bought a, or we had one of these Dymo tape machines. And you could, it's like a label maker for those in the 21st century. And you would get this thing and you stick some tape in it and it would be a colored tape and you would dial the letter you wanted in the alphabet. So if he wanted to put, write Pepperland, right, he'd dial it to P and then like press really hard to P. And then it would advance to the next letter and you'd dial it to E. You'd press it down and then dial it back to P. And it was nice because Pepperland, two P's in a row, so got some efficiency out of it. And he wrote the entire dialogue of the Yellow Submarine, a two-hour movie, in Dymo tape. <laughs> and then he'd take, he'd take the label off and put it on the, on the wall. And so I don't think he actually ever finished that whole thing. I, I think that only half of the, dime, the, the wall had Dymo tape. But it was a masterpiece uh, on the wall. So we loved living up in that room. And uh, there was a skylight, I mentioned. And I think one time in, during August when there were a lot of, um, there was a meteor shower. He and I, we got up on that one chair, that Michelangelo chair, and we're looking at, we're watching them, and then we saw one, it's like, oh, there's one, and we tumbled down off the chair. And you know, we never really did much wrong as kids, and the door opens to the, the, the attic, and like, you boys go to sleep! <laughs> like, we were so scared, <laughs> like, oh no, we're looking at stars, we're, um, but it was nice having the skylight in the room. Another, around that time when he was in high school, he, he joined, the, he did some computer lab thing, whatever a computer was. And I remember seeing it later when I was in high school. It's like this little TV and a, and a really old clunky typewriter looking thing for a keyboard. And um, he would do this thing, he, he programmed in basic. And so he played this, he would play this game. And I guess he had one machine, and there was somebody else sitting right next to him or in another building or something also communicating, and they would type a command in BASIC, and then the, 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 the paper printout would go choo, 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 and would spit out a page length of a scroll. And it would be a star field, like asterisks all around, and then in the middle there'd be like a V, and then a little bit over to the right there'd be a T, and I guess, I think the V was the Klingons, and the T was the Enterprise. And then the person on the other end would type something, and then choo, 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 and you would see that the V had moved one letter, one more letter worth over to the left in sort of in some sort of evasive maneuver. And so this was a video game. Paper was on paper, though, and the scroll would come out of the of the the printer, and it would just keep going and going and going. And what Christopher would do is at the end of he could do it for like five hours. And at the end of it, he would take the scroll home and he'd come up to the attic and he was like, I got to show you this. I, we had this Starfleet battle and he takes the scroll and he rolls it out the length of the, of the attic, which is the whole length of the house. He's like, this is the way it goes. Okay, let me show you. You see this part here? This is where I fired a phaser and then he fired photon torpedoes at me. Can, can you see that? I was like, I can't see that. I, like, I see a V and I see a T. <laughs> And then there's a there's a dash mark. He goes right. That's a that's a phaser. <laughs> and then he would pull the scroll a little more. And then here, this is what he did over here. And then what I did. And, and he was fascinated. <laughs> it's just reliving the glory of this computer game. I really had no idea what he was doing, but I just enjoyed that we were doing something together in the attic. And like, okay, it looks like it's fun. So paper-based video game was was awesome. One of the things that he did in the computer room, uh, it was mom's birthday, I forget which, which year it was, and 
he did some program in basic and printed out the scroll so this was his birthday card he printed out something on this big long scroll and he brought it into the dining room where we were having cake and, and candles and um and one of his friends from the computer lab came in and they rolled out the scroll and it said happy birthday and the h was all capital H and the A was all capital A's and the P was all capital P's and so he had written some programs so that it was like happy birthday and all this. It was a very early computer world type of birthday card. It was awesome. Um, so Christopher, happy birthday with all capital H's and capital A's, etc. Well done.